Welcome to the 2017 Keene Mayoral Debate hosted by the Keene Liberty Alliance. My name is Daryl W. Perry. I'm a co-founder of the Keene Liberty Alliance. I'll be the moderator of this debate. Uh, Mayor Lane, Bob Cole, thank you both for showing up. Real quick, I'm going to go over the format of the debate. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement after which time I'll ask a series of questions alternating between who answers first. Unless I state otherwise for a specific question, each candidate will have one minute to answer with the candidate who answers first getting a 30 second rebuttal. To close the debate, each candidate will get two minutes for a closing statement. Mr. Cole, you have two minutes for an opening statement. Hello, my name is Robert Call. I'm running for the office of mayor in Keene, New Hampshire. And as for my run for mayor, I look to address many different issues in our community. Uh, right now, our city government doesn't do enough to reach out to everyone in the community. Uh, we need to address many different problems in the community that the city's not hearing or is dancing around the issue. We need to focus more on solving issues here at home and not those on the national stage. For my run of, as mayor, I will make it my priority to work within the confines of the community, with the community, and with the city government to address many of these issues. Uh, we have a stagnant or declining do uh, population in the city of Keene. Uh, we need to, we don't have enough diversification of employment opportunities, and we're going to run the risk of uh, many bad things if we don't address these issues. Mayor Lane. Okay, thank you. First off, I want to thank the uh, Keene Liberty Alliance for hosting this discussion of the issues that are currently facing Keene. Uh, in this election cycle, this may be the only opportunity that, that uh, Mr. Call and I have to, uh, to discuss the issues, so I think it's important that, that we take advantage of, of this opportunity to discuss how Keene moves forward. The city of Keene has a number of initiatives that, that have been started both by, by my office and, and by the city manager and by the city council that are moving forward. These include, we're working to rewrite the uh, land, land development code for the, for the city of Keene, something I hope that I have a chance later on to uh, discuss more, in more depth. Uh, we're working to make the development codes uh, more user-friendly, if you will. Uh, we're working to uh, open the, uh, and spur the economic growth of the community, uh, revitalization of the downtown, and perhaps some of our you know, most, most significant issues really relate around the, uh, the economy and our attempts to uh, expand the, the local diversity of, of the economy. Uh, in addition, we're, we're encouraging more investment in our, in our housing, uh, and we're working to upgrade the airport. These are all designed to improve the experience our citizens have here in Keene. And with major changes in local leadership, changes that include a new city manager, a new president of Keene State College, a new leadership at Antioch, uh, it's necessary really to provide stability and continuity as we proceed with our current efforts to uh, pursue the, the, uh, the success of, of this community. So I'm, I'm running for re-election primarily because of the need to provide that level of continuity and you, to ca carry forward with, with local initiatives. Uh, for this question, you will each have two minutes to answer with no rebuttal. Mayor Lane, we'll start with you. What, in your opinion, are the three most pressing issues facing the city? And how do you plan to address these issues? Again, two minutes. Well, the three, the, the three most pressing issues, first off, I, I, I would start with, with the real estate taxes, that uh, although, although if you live in Keene, the amount of money that you actually pay for taxes is very comparable to the amount of money you would pay in, in Manchester or Portsmouth or, or any, any of the large cities in, in the state. But our tax rate as such is quite high, uh, and, and we're facing a potential crisis. The school district has already determined that they will be increasing the, the taxes by 4%. Uh, the, uh, 
uh, county has uh, approved the bond for a new nursing home, which will increase taxes by $57 per 100000 uh, these, these are all going to have a, a significant effect. In the long run, the way to control the growth in taxes is to spur the economy and to increase the tax base. And we will be continuing to work to increase the tax base of the City of Keene as we, as we go forward. Bob? So there are th my choice of three main issues that are affecting Keene is uh, property taxes. Uh, Many, I've heard too many stories around the community with, uh, about people losing their homes or who are at risk of losing their homes. Some people, uh, my taxes alone since I've moved to Keene have gone up $1,000. Now, for a lot of people, that may not be a big deal, but for many people, especially people on fixed incomes or fixed salaries, that's a huge blow. Uh, generally, that can mean the difference between uh, making uh, uh, repairs on one's home or taking care of an emergency that comes up. Uh, that's very, very critical uh, that we make sure that we are spending wisely. Uh, we also, the city government needs to be more transparent with its citizens. The Marlboro Street rezoning project, if you go to the section on the website, has no information whatsoever about the project. All it has is a phone number to call if I want, if, uh, which leads me to a voicemail box. I have not been able to get a response. And uh, we need, the city government needs to engage the community more. To address many of the issues that we have, uh, we need to uh, bring more diverse employment opportunities to Keene uh, because a lot of the issues that we're facing stems from that. We need to bring more people to Keene. If you want to have all of these nice programs, we definitely need to uh, uh, increase our tax base. For this question, we'll go back to the original rules to where you each have one minute to answer. Uh, Mr. Call, you will have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if you so choose. In Charlottesville and a few other cities recently, people were rioting over statues. Two years ago in Keene, there were riots at the college over pumpkins. As such, Pumpkin Fest was moved away from downtown Keene. And as you are probably aware, the city council recently approved the application for a smaller pumpkin fest to be held completely in Central Square. Do you support or oppose this decision and why? Well, I, that, uh, that Mayor Lane, it's Mr. Cole's okay. opportunity to begin. Yeah. Uh, I, su I support that we sh uh, should have the pumpkin festival. Uh, it's important to allow the freedom of expression of the arts and to give a form for that insp uh, expression. Uh, many people, uh, uh, the, uh, the Pumpkin Festival in Keene has been part of Keene's history for some time now, uh, way too long to give up on it. Uh, we've broken several different records in regards to the Pumpkin Festival, uh, and we should strive to do that in the future. Uh, just because we can now, in regards to that, we can't condone violence or anything else, but we can't use it as a, as a scapegoat for not having these events, since they're completely unrelated. Mayor Lane. Thank you. As many, as many of you, I'm sure, know, I cast the deciding vote to, to approve the uh, license for the Pumpkin Fest this year. Uh, the Pumpkin Fest will go forward as, as a result of, of my decision. The, uh, issues relating to the Pumpkin Fest as, as it existed before were that it was too large, it was too expensive, and, and it was not appropriate for, for our community. Those issues still exist. The Pumpkin Fest as it's currently being, being proposed is a small event to be held on a Sunday afternoon. And, and I support that. And I will continue to support a small event to be held on a Sunday afternoon. I would not support going back to look for, look for a record. It, it's really kind of senseless to look for a record since we already own the record. We don't have something to look forward to there. Uh, and and a, a large event on, during, during the, a Saturday would be totally inappropriate. But, but a small pumpkin fest on, on, on a Sunday afternoon I, th I think is totally appropriate and totally in keeping with this community. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Cole, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if you so choose. Too large. It really gradually grew over the period of 26 years, not to mention the foot traffic that it brings to downtown Keene. By reducing its size, not only are you taking away that medium of expression, that we need to have, we need to bring back the full Keene uh, Pumpkin Festival.
Thank you. On this question, you will each have two minutes, no rebuttal. Mayor Lane, we'll begin with you. Amazon recently promised to invest $5 billion in whichever community they choose to be the home of their second headquarters, with the company saying it would bring 50,000 new jobs with an average salary of more than $100,000. What, if anything, could Keen do to attract a business of such a caliber? And to what extent would such a business impact tax rates for homeowners in Keene? Well, uh, the, the issue of, of Amazon is, is one that, that uh, we're very interested in. In fact, I, I have contacted the state, uh, and, and uh, we, are, we are part of a uh, proposal that, that has been made to Amazon for them to relocate in New Hampshire. That, that it, it's being discussed that, that one, one of the issues that they need is an airport. We have an airport. We have a beautiful airport that, that in fact has the third longest runway in the state of New Hampshire and is totally, is totally appropriate for the needs of, of Amazon. Uh, in addition, you know, we, we would find the, uh, the space for them to build a facility that would be appropriate for them. Uh, the issue really comes down to 50,000 jobs. We don't have 50,000 people looking for work in Keene. We have over a thousand jobs today that are going unfilled because we don't have the workforce to to fill those jobs. We don't have the qualified people. We don't have what's necessary in order to expand our industrial base with with a sustainable employment base. Uh, so that's something that that is a challenge for us. It's a challenge that we have to work for. Uh, as far as the impact that Amazon coming to Keene would have on the tax base. I doubt very much that it would have much of an impact at all. There would be costs associated with it. The costs would most likely outride the, the uh, additional tax revenue that, that Amazon would bring. That, so, you know, and and 50,000 new people in Keene would require new schools. It would require new development. It would require new water and sewer. There would be a huge investment that the community would have to make if, if, if that number of people suddenly arrived in Keene. So we have to be careful what we ask for because it does have unintended consequences. But I would certainly support Amazon coming to New Hampshire. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Cole? Um, I would support Amazon coming to New Hampshire. However, I would not, su be, I would not support them moving to Keene. Uh, we simply don't have the space, for one. Number two, it would, we would lose the small city charm that Keene brings to the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we have an airport that's subsidized, that's, uh, that, use, that uh, is, uses tax, our taxpayer dollars, uh, and other people should be fitting the bill for that, whether it be the county or a private entity. Uh, we just don't simply have the means to support having an Amazon warehouse in Keene. The following question was submitted via Twitter. And again, we'll go back to the original rules. Uh, Mr. Call, you have one minute uh, to answer this question, and you will have a rebuttal if you so choose. What victimless crimes would you like to see no longer enforced by the Keene Police? That's kind of a loaded question. Victim, uh, there are many. Uh, you'd have to actually define what a victimless crime is, uh, given the context. Uh, uh, I will let you use the definition of your choice. Uh, so we definitely have a huge uh, problem with uh, the drug problem in Keene. The city of Keene is going about uh, enforcing that in the wrong way. What we need to focus on to solve that problem is to uh, make better, uh, more, bring more diverse employment opportunities and a better quality of life to Keene. Mayor. First off, I, I, I would like to just point out that the, you know, the, the office of the mayor, the office, even the city council does not have the power to determine what laws the police department will enforce or not enforce. That's really a question that, that the state government has to answer in determining which laws are they going to place on the books. And, and by, by statute, our police department has the obligation of enforcing the laws that the state puts on the book. It's important to remember that we are not a, a community that is independent. We are, very, we are in fact, a, a sub, subset of, of state government, and we are subject to the rules and, and laws that state government sets. 
Mr. Cole, would you like a rebuttal? I'll take that as a no. Uh, next question submitted also by Twitter, Mayor Lane. Google Fiber has said that they will go to any city that welcomes them, which would bring super fast internet to Keene if they were welcomed. Will you reach out to Google to bring Fiber? We have reached out to Google and I would support Google in a heartbeat. The high speed internet is absolutely critical for any community going forward in the 21st century. High speed internet, however we can get it, is, is important to this community. And, and we, we, we have fought for years with, with, the, with the state, with the legislature who has prohibited us from putting in our own high speed internet and, and with, with, with state government and tried to get high speed internet into, into this area. If Google Fiber is willing to bring high speed internet in, into the Monadnock region, and into the city of Keene, I would support them in a heartbeat. Mr. Cole? Uh, I would support if Google Fiber chose to be in Keene. However, uh, given current laws, that's not uh, really applicable. We already have uh, New Hampshire fast roads, for one. And number two, uh, there are other ways to address these problems uh, with, uh, if we cannot uh, pass the needed uh, regulations needed to make that happen. Uh, we, could, this, we could easily work together with certain providers to provide a high speed wireless internet service to the city of Keene. Mayor Lane, would you like a rebuttal? On, on, only to say that, that, that Fairpoint and Time Warner are the only providers currently for internet service in this region. And, and that they have both indicated that they will provide us with the internet service that they believe that we need. Uh, that, that, that is not adequate, that, that is not high speed internet, and, and that has be, been a real issue for us for, for some period of time. Uh, we, we work with the state government, we need to provide opportunities Thank for, you, Mayor. for uh, competition. Uh, next question, Mr. Cole. Uh, what, if anything, can be done or do you believe should be done to increase transparency in local government? Uh, the city of Keene has made many milestones in being transparent to its citizens, from having city council meetings available online to uh, providing me meeting notes uh, to its citizens. There's still a lot to be desired. Uh, anything relating to projects and committees definitely needs to be made available to everyone. Uh, definitely, sh I shouldn't have to call someone that I'm never going to get a response from. Mayor? City of Keene reaches out to its citizens on, on a regular, ongoing basis. Uh, I will admit that our website is not the easiest website to, to uh, navigate, that, that while the information that the, the citizens seek is there, it is not always readily accessible. We have tried to change our budgeting process. In fact, we have an ongoing effort to create priority-based budgeting, which it will be much more transparent, much more easy for the members of the public to understand. Uh, we have, over the past two years, developed a user's guide that, that we distribute widely throughout the community so that, so that members of the public can see and understand exactly where their tax dollars are going. Uh, transparency is something that, that we take seriously. It is something that we are constantly thriving to improve and, and we will continue to do so. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Call, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if you so choose. Uh, the city government still needs to work on that. It, um, many of the reports are not laid out in a coherent and professional way in a lot of regards. A lot of the people that I've talked to going door to door don't really see it as a transparent medium. We need to make it so that it, everything is comprehensible to the average person who lives in Keene and get, make it so that they can be involved as well. Thank you. And I'm glad both of you mentioned the budget because the next question is about the budget. Uh, Mayor Lane, what, if anything, do you believe can be done or should be done to reduce spending, specifically things that a lot of people would consider to be government waste? Well, first off, I, I, I would point out that 70% uh, of our budget is police, fire, and public works. 
if you want us to reduce the number of police officers, if you want us to reduce the number of firemen, if you want us to no longer pave the roads, uh, that, that, that would certainly work to, to reduce the budget. Uh, beyond that, we, we have 14 different areas that the city is working on that, that constitute a very small portion of the budget. And if any one of them were eliminated, which certainly could be done, uh, the impact on, on the taxes and the impact on the budget would, would be minimal. My suggestion is that, that in the long run, the way to reduce the budget is, is to increase the amount of economic activity, increase the tax base for the city, and as we increase the tax base, that will have the impact of, of uh, reducing the taxes. And in fact, that's something that we're already doing. We're already bringing new businesses into Keene. Thank we're, you, Mayor. We're already working to expand the tax base. Mr. Cole, uh, there's a lot that is needs to there's a lot to be desired with the way that the city of Keene is handling its budget. We have an airport that is constantly losing money, not gaining money, and is a huge liability for the city. For that, we need to mitigate that liability by either moving the airport to under management of an, its own private nonprofit that receives no funding from the city or we need to get all of the communities together to help pitch in if they want a regional airport. Uh, we also need to hold spending until we can actually bring more of those small businesses to Keene. Uh, when I moved to Keene, I brought my significant other and his small business to Keene. He sells hardware that works uh, with the specialized hardware that works with the Linux operating system. And we need to bring more niche businesses to Keene. Mayor, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal if you choose. I, I would only say, first off, as far as the airport is concerned, that, that the airport is one of the major economic assets that the city of Keene has. Uh, I think it's fantasy to think that, that uh, towns around Keene, which have been involved in, in discussions regarding the airport for years, uh, would, would want to uh, take over the responsibility for the airport. They've, they have voted and decided on several occasions that they have no interest in that. And, and I would not expect that that would change. Uh, I, I would say, however, that, that we, are, we are expanding the, the uh, economic base. We, we have over $100 million of new you, construction Mayor. going on this year. Uh, Mr. Cole, uh, you will get a chance to answer this question first. Opinion polls from across the country show that a majority of voters think that government simply does not work. What could be done, in your opinion, to fix the underlying structures and systems that seem to be broken? So uh, we definitely need to work as a community to address many of the problems that we have. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, spending is... Uh, actually, I have no opinion on that question. Mayor? You're absolutely right that the polls are showing that for many people, gov government does not work. I think it's important, though, to recognize that at the national level, government is in gridlock. Government has been in gridlock for almost 20 years now, uh, and it does not work. It doesn't work for any of us. Therefore, we have a responsibility at the local and municipal level to make government work for the people. It's the government closest to the individuals, and we, we work to achieve that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cole, would you like a rebuttal? Uh, well, we're simply not doing enough, especially if we're forcing people out of their homes and you're not addressing half the issues that I've heard going door to door. Uh, we definitely need to work in that area. Thank you. Mayor Lane, do you think that government regulations are too complex and bureaucratic? And if so, how do you think that can be overhauled uh, to give people more choice locally? Well, particularly in Keene, we, ha we have developed a series of, of uh, particularly development regulations over the years that are incredibly complex and incredibly difficult for somebody to, to apply. Basically, what, what has happened is that the regulations up work very well for a large developer for, for, somebody, for somebody putting, putting in a, a large project in Keene, uh, they're professionals, they understand the system, and, and they make the system work, and it works very successfully for them. For the, for the smaller individual, for the, for the business, the regulations don't work very well. And therefore, we, we are 
currently undergoing a review of the entire regulatory process for the City of Keene to substantially reduce the number of regulations and to simplify the regulations. Also to set up a two-tier system so, so that for a small developer, for, for, for a small business owner, the regulations will work for them and, and be easy to apply. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Cole? Uh, there's a lot of red tape for a lot of individuals that many need to go through when other uh, building a home or a small business. Uh, we definitely need to work in that area to address those problems. Uh, the damage has already been done. Uh, a lot of times it's other uh, hindered uh, small businesses from coming to Keene, or it's making it so that people are having a difficult time selling their house if they've been in their home for more than 20 or 30 years. Uh, these are real issues affecting the community. Thank you, Mayor. You have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. No, I, and, and I, don't, I don't disagree that those are very real issues for the community, but it, as I've indicated, that's an initiative that, that is currently ongoing. In fact, it's one of the initiatives that, that prompted me to decide to run for re-election because I think it's important and I, and I want to see it continued. Thank you. Even with the recent addition of Chipotle and T-Mobile in the former Pizza Hut location, there's still a fairly large number of empty storefronts around Keene. Some people blame this on the high tax rates in the city. Uh, what, if you are elected, what will you do to address the rising property tax rates? And do you believe that this will attract new businesses into the city? Mr. Cole, you have one minute. Um, I've already covered part of this in, my, uh, in the one of the previous questions. Uh, the airport is a huge uh, drain on resources and liabilities for the city. Uh, we also need to reduce spending uh, in many key areas until we get the, pop the population that we need to sustain all of this stuff. Uh, reducing uh, property taxes will definitely help bring small businesses to Keene. We also need to make parking a little bit better in, uh, in down on Main Street. Uh, Mayor? I think it's important to recognize when we talk about the tax rate that, that uh, the best solution to the tax rate in the long run is to expand the tax base and that's what we're working to achieve. I think it's also important to recognize that the city government is only responsible for 35 percent of, of the real estate taxes and we actually have maintained our 35 percent with a minimal increase. It's been less than 2 percent for the, for, the, for the last two years. Uh, the rest of it is really raised for the school district and for the county, and we have no control over, over, over their budgets, and we have no control over the amount that they require for, for additional taxes. So that's really where, where the increase has been. But uh, if our bill, we, our, we invest to, to maintain the expansion of the tax base, and that in the long run is, where, is what's going to uh, work for everybody's benefit. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Cole, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Uh, this has been, these have been long-standing problems, and as the mayor pointed out, yes, we only have uh, control over a small percentage of, of those property tax increases. However, for that percentage, we need to make sure that we're, spent, we're only spending what we need so that we can at least try to make Keene a more compelling place to bring small businesses and people. Thank you. Mayor Lane, this question you will have two minutes to answer. There will be no rebuttal. The U.S. Department of Justice recently announced new rules designed to withhold certain federal grants from so-called sanctuary cities. These rules were then tossed out by a federal court in Chicago. As you are aware, the uh, City Council of Keene and the Keene Police Department received a federal grant for a ballistic engineered armored response counterattack truck in 2012. Do you believe that Keene should be a sanctuary city? Why or why not? No, I don't think that Keene should be a sanctuary city. It, it's difficult for me to understand what a sanctuary city really is. That, that uh, you know, we, we certainly have had discussions about whether, whether in fact, uh, the, uh, we, we should be enforcing federal immigration r rules. Uh, we do not. The, the sheriff has indicated that, that, that we do not enforce them. Whether that qualifies as a sanctuary city, 
I have no idea that, that uh, you know, those communities that choose to call themselves sanctuary cities cross a wide variety of issues that, that, that they, they wish to adopt for that title. It's not a title that we're interested in. It's not a title that, that's applicable in, in this community. Thank you. Mr. Cole? Uh, we should uh, definitely work to make sure that we can make it a keen and compelling place for people to live and grow. Uh, being a, labeled as a sanctuary city, uh, we, we shouldn't care about that label. What we should do is try to make people keen a more inclusive place to bring small businesses and individuals into the city of Keene. Thank you. Next question. And again, one minute for response, 30 second rebuttal for Mr. Cole. Uh, what do you cherish most about the city? It's small town feel that it brings, small city feel that it brings to this southwestern part of New Hampshire. Mayor? The people, the people of this community are unique in this nation. They care about this community. They are innovative, they are creative. They are willing to roll up the sleeves and go to work to solve issues in the city that uh, there, there are, you will, you will have be hard pressed to find a city across the country that has the sense of volunteerism and the, and the sense of community support that, that Keene does. We just had the DeMar Marathon this, this past week, and at that, at that marathon, thousands of people came out to work on it, not because they were part of the organizing committee, not even because they were asked to do it, but simply because they felt that under the, all the circumstances of that race, it was appropriate to make sure that the race was successful and, and that the runners were healthy and, and were able to, able to complete the race. That really demonstrates what the, the ethnic that, that the people in this community have, and, the, and you, that's Mayor. really the strongest thing that I can say about them. Mr. Cole, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Uh, following question, you will each have two minutes to answer, and you will each have 45 seconds for a rebuttal. Mayor Lane, we'll begin with you. In Ward 1, no candidates filed for the office of Ward Clerk, Ward Moderator, or Ward Selectman. In Ward 2, only two candidates filed for the three Ward Selectman seats, and other wards only had as many candidates file as there were offices. Uh, and very few people generally attend city council meetings. Do you consider this to be a good sign or not? And what, if anything, do you believe can be done to encourage more participation in local government? Again, two minutes. I think that the, the things that you cited really don't, don't indicate lack of participation in, in city government. First off, as far, far as attendance at city council meetings, the city council meetings are broadcast live on Cheshire TV, the, and, and many, many people across the community watch those, those uh, city council meetings and the city committee meetings when, when they're being broadcast. Uh, I, I think that the, that really is what indicates the, a, the participation level in, in city government. As, fa as far as the ward offices, uh, I need to point out that particularly in Ward 1, the ward moderator had, was moderator for 30 years. People didn't realize that she was stepping down. Uh, they would have stepped up, uh, the, that Bob Lyle, in fact, stepped up to, to run for moderator. But people didn't have contacted the city clerk's office. They've contacted my office. Uh, there are people running write-in campaigns now for all of the uh, ward offices that, that are vacant. And uh, I think that, that uh, their, their willingness to step forward really shows the, their support for city government. Mr. Cole, two minutes. There is definitely, well, the tools of Cheshire TV and having the city council meetings on the city website are very helpful. We need to, there's still a lack of participation in regards to getting pe regular people to step up to the plate. Uh, we need we definitely need to encourage people from all walks of life to run for office if they if they won't see something that they are, they're not a fan of. Mayor, you have 45 seconds for a rebuttal. We, 
in, in the last election cycle, in, in 2015, uh, we had a large number of people that were running for city office. Uh, I fill 173 uh, seats every single year for uh, various boards and commissions. I, I have a waiting list of people that want to serve on, on, on those boards and commissions. So that, so that to, to, to suggest that, that people aren't willing to step up and, and participate in city government is, is just not accurate. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Kong, you have 45 seconds for a rebuttal. So why were those uh, positions not filled then? Why is it that people didn't fill out, out the proper form to run for office? We need to make it very more clear that these positions are open and that people, and regular people should run. Thank you. The next question, you will each have two minutes to answer this question with no rebuttal. Mr. Cole, we'll begin with you. President Trump recently called New Hampshire a drug-infested den while claiming massive voter fraud in the Granite State. Do you believe the claims of massive voter fraud and to what extent do you believe that non-resident college students should be allowed to participate in local government? Again, two minutes. We need to stop entertaining all of these uh, claims at the national level and start showing by example that what we are as New Hampshireites. To make those claims, those loaded claims is just preposterous. Uh, but however, we do have our own share of issues that need to be addressed now and we need to affect we need to effectively address them here at the local community. Uh, I don't have any issues with Keene's, uh, students of Keene State registering to, to vote as long as they live and are domiciled in the New Hampshire Constitution and the applicable laws still apply. Thank you. Mayor Lane, you have two minutes. Like, like many of the uh, uh, pronouncements that come out of, uh, out of the White House these days, this one is also preposterous that uh, there is no evidence whatsoever of widespread voter fraud in, in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, I heard a story about busloads of people coming up here from Massachusetts to vote. It never happened. It didn't happen here. It didn't happen in Nashua. It didn't happen anywhere in the state of New Hampshire. I would suggest that, that uh, allowing college students to vote is important. Participatory democracy requires that everybody be allowed to participate, and we, I, I continue to support the efforts of same-day voter registration, the efforts of the, of the state of New Hampshire, our, you know, and the efforts of our city clerk, which have gone above and beyond to try to encourage college students to participate. Thank you. Mayor Lane. Uh, the city is expected to spend roughly $10,000 on a municipal primary to remove one candidate from the at-large city council race. Do you believe this is a wise resource uh, or a wise use of resources? Why or why not? I do not believe it's a wise use of resources. I think that, that we should abolish the uh, municipal primary and anyone who wants to run for uh, office, whether, whether it's mayor or city council, should be allowed to be on the ballot come the November election and should participate in, in that election. I would uh, simply abolish the, the uh, primary. I think it's a waste of, waste of effort and a waste of money. Mr. Call, you have one minute. Uh, we definitely, uh, it is a huge problem uh, and it should, people should be able to file on a first come first serve basis and if they still want to run, write, run a write-in campaign. Mayor, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal, if you choose. Uh, no, I, I really don't have any, any, any rebuttal. I, I, would, I would simply say that, that uh, you know, the, the uh, city of Keene is one of the very few communities in the state that still has a municipal primary. Most have abolished it, and I think Keene should follow that lead and also abolish it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cole, we'll begin with you. Uh, what are your thoughts on term limits? And if elected, would you urge the city council to do anything to institute them? Again, one minute. Uh, I am in all favor for term limits. Uh, however, it's important to, to uh, weigh those options and make sure that we get input from the community if we're going to take that route. Mayor? 
Uh, we already have term limits for, for the various boards and commissions in the city that, that you can only serve a maximum of, of two, t two terms or six years. That, that uh, for elected offices, I think that's the voters that, that really decide how long somebody should be willing, able to serve. Mr. Call, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, in most positions, we do need term limits, but that's going to be, that should be for the people to decide. Thank you. And we're now going to a wild card round to where I will allow each one of you to ask your opponent one question. Uh, your opponent will have two minutes to answer. Mayor Lane, we'll begin with you. Do you have a question you would like Mr. Cole to answer? The question I, the question I would ask is, is you know, you, you were a resident of Nashua and you recently, within the last year or so, moved to Keene. And I would, I would be interested in knowing what experience, what background in Keene you bring to the office of mayor that would qualify you to, to serve in that position. I only, my time spent in Nashua has no reflection on my views, opinions, and ideas. When I was living in Nashua, I mostly fe focused on my career. Uh, I care deeply about Keene. I've wanted to live in Keene for a long time, but never had the funds to do so up until the point in time in which I moved. I care enough that I, not only, I moved to Keene, me and my, my significant other and I bought a house and moved his, fully moved his business to Keene. So, I am fully dedicated to the community. My background, I have uh, I've been employed by numerous nonprofits, and I do have a background in uh, community building as a free software developer. Mr. Cole, is there a question you would like to ask the mayor? If you're elected mayor, uh, would you make an effort to go and reach out to everyone on, of all walks of life? not just those who might be in your bubble or who might uh, not necessarily be of means. And again, Mayor, you have two minutes to okay, answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, as, as, as those who have followed my career know that during the time that I have had the opportunity to serve as mayor, I have spent much of my time reaching out to, to those. I reach out to the LBTQ community. I reach out to, to a variety of diverse communities. Uh, I've recently reached out to the, to the diverse uh, coordinator at Keene State College looking f you know, to recruit uh, individuals of, of ver various racial and, and ethnic backgrounds to serve and participate in city government. I think the, that uh, we need to take advantage of talents everywhere that they exist regardless of, of uh, what kind of, uh, what, what, the, what they have for, for labels, which, which is something that, that, that I think are abhorrent for, for this community. That, that uh, we are reaching out right now, in fact, that we've been in discussions with, with the governor of Puerto Rico. There are a number of highly qualified people in Puerto Rico who are interested in leaving the island as a result of the destruction of the hurricane, and we are looking for housing, we are looking for jobs, we are, we are inviting them to, uh, to relocate in Keene and, and assist us with, with the expansion of our economic base here. Thank you, Mayor. And the next question, you'll each have two minutes to answer. Uh, Mayor, we'll begin with you. As you're aware, we have a lot of unique events in Keene. We have the Monadnock International Film Festival. There's also the DeMar Marathon and Half Marathon that just happened. Keene has a music festival, the uh, now smaller Pumpkin Festival, and other similar events, plus the Colonial Theater brings in some pretty big name musical acts. What events would you like to see happen in Keene that are not currently happening? Uh, on, your, on your list, you left off the Monadnock Fall Festival, which will be held this coming weekend. Uh, the, the Fall Festival will have three music events. Uh, there'll be a stage in front of the co-op, there'll be a stage in Central Square Gazebo, and a stage in River Square. In addition, there, there will be haystack sculptures, there will be affordable art sale taking place at Heberton Hall, uh, and there are a number of other events. There will be a fun run that will, that will be starting off the Fall Festival. 
these, these are the types uh, of activities that I think are important for the community. They are community-based events, and, and they take place uh, in the downtown. They attract people to the downtown. They really show our culture. They, they show what is, what is strongest about our community. We have to be careful about expanding much beyond what we, are, we already have because there's a cost associated with them. There's a cost to the taxpayers, there's a cost for overtime, there's a cost for the setup, for the takedown from public works, uh, there's a cost to, to the fire department to, to provide uh, medical safety for, for the people during these events. So we really have to be careful not to uh, have more events than, than what we currently have. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Cole, you have two minutes to answer the question. Um, I'd be willing to entertain the idea of having other types of festivals. However, uh, uh, we shouldn't really be out, we should try to limit how much taxpayer dollars we're actually allocating to these events and evaluate the risks of having such events. These events are, are very important and if we need to, there's other things we could do to mitigate some of those risks, including holding them in parks or other places that would limit our liabilities, our, the city's liabilities. Thank you. And we're a little ahead of schedule, but we'll go ahead and move to closing statements. Mayor Lane, you have two minutes to make your closing statement. Thank you. Uh, for all of you who have had the opportunity to see this discussion, for all of you who, who are able to watch it, whether it's on YouTube or, or whether it's on Cheshire TV, uh, Thank you for watching. We do appreciate it. We do appreciate the opportunity to, to ha have spoken out today. Uh, there are obviously many more issues that, that relate to the city. Uh, the, the current redrafting of, of the land use code, which is critical to our future economic development. The fact that we have right now going on over $100 million in new construction taking place in the city of Keene, much of which will be taxable and, and we'll expand our, our tax base. Those are all issues, those are all important to this community, and those are all reflect what our future is going to look like. So the, I really appreciate the fact that you took the interest to watch this, and I hope that you will vote on the October 3rd primary, since we're spending $110,000 to hold it. Uh, and, and I certainly urge you to, to vote in November in the general election, and I hope that you will consider supporting me for re-election. Mr. Cole, you have two minutes for a closing statement. I'd like to first off thank you, thank Cheshire TV for inviting me and for having this debate. Uh, thank every, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I hope that this debate has been informative, even though there are many more issues on the table. Uh, it's important that we talk to everyone involved in the election election process and see what they're ab about. Um, if you anyone wants to contact me, they're free to do so. Uh, send me an email at bob at bobcall.me if you have any questions about my campaign or my election. And I hope that everyone will get out and vote no matter how they vote. Thank you both. And again, I'd like to thank both of you for showing up, Mayor Lane and Mr. Cole. Thank you again for participating. And for those of you watching at home, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Keene Mayoral Debate hosted by the Keene Liberty Alliance. I've been your host and moderator, Daryl W. Perry. And don't forget to vote in the upcoming general election again, November 7th. Thank you.